37 here at uh, Rush Radio, 1061 WRDU. Carmen Connors and uh, myself, Casey O'Day, pleased to uh, be joined by uh, one of the few people, uh, not counting uh, our own uh, President Barack Obama, who has uh, thrown his hat in the ring for the upcoming presidential election. <laughs> Herman Kane, yeah, that's how we say his name here. How are you doing today, Mr. Kane? I'm doing great. Thanks a lot. Oh. You know why? Because and a lot of people, you you would not be you would not be well. You probably wouldn't be surprised. I should say with the number of folks who claim that every time we play this, Barack Obama. Yeah. How? What a bunch of racist, filthy, horrible people we are. But does that epitomizes that woman who's who was being interviewed by that news reporter in Detroit yeah. saying that she's going to pay her rent with Obama cash. And where does the money come from? Well, it comes from Obama. Well, where does he get it? I don't know, from a room off the Oval Office. That epitomizes what I think a lot of people think is uh, wrong in America yes. today. And, Carmen, i got to tell you, my co-host, Carmen. Hi. Hello, Carmen. Good to talk to you. Oh, it is a good, no thing, a good thing you're not in studio because it would be obscenely uncomfortable. I would, I would have a heart attack. You are a rock star in my book. You're too kind. And, Thank you. Well, I mean, you you remind me so much. You, you know, what, what? first of all, it was Chris Christie. Yes. People that come out and just say what they feel and be damned if if you don't like it. And if you don't like it, don't vote for me. That, but this, this, is, this is America. Exactly. But it's so refreshing to see people who just say this is and, and I know you know what you want to note the moment I fell in love with you. When was that? Right after you made the Muslim comment. I just because I feel the same way. We had a caller sum it up. He right. said, you know, I. The Muslim extremists, yep. I'm not qualified to know what to look for. Right. So therefore, with the problems, you know, so forth and so forth. I'm not asking questions. I'm just babbling. I'm just crazy about you. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited hey, to talk Carmen, to you. I'm enjoying listening to you. That's fine. Just babbling. Just babbling hey, on. Hey, let me ask you. Let me ask you a couple questions. Yes, just because she brought up uh, Chris Christie. Yes. Uh, news reports have said that several people have went up and uh, met with the governor up there and are looking for support from him. Did, have you had a conversation with Chris Christie? No, I haven't. I haven't had the opportunity to meet him yet. And, uh, uh, or, or certainly not to ask him for support. Uh, he's a great guy, but he has said over and over he's not interested in running for president. And, you know, endorsements, you know, that's a great thing. But, uh, no, I haven't had an opportunity to meet with him yet. Let's, uh, and, and then one other question. I know Carmen's got a couple for you. Yes. What, I, there was a story out last week that uh, coming up here, I believe it was next week, was supposed to be the first debate between the uh, the Republicans who have uh, thrown their hat in the ring. Right. That's not happening. Now, the president came out earlier this week and uh, put out a YouTube video that he didn't even make an appearance in saying he's running again. Yes. Why do you think there's kind of this holdback among conservatives? Why is everybody in exploratory committee approach or saying, well, I'll tell you in June, and and I have a theory, but I'm interested uh, what you have to say about that. Why do we not see more folks like yourself out hitting the streets and saying, hey, here's what I'm about, vote for me? I can tell you my timetable. Mm -hmm. I did the exploratory, made the exploratory announcement in January. Yes. And the objective was to put my toe in the water, and we established four metrics. And based upon how those metrics performed, I was going to make a decision to go no-go. Uh, and so out of the four metrics... Uh, one of the, one of the metrics has been the response of volunteers, which has been overwhelming. Mm -hmm. People can go to hermancain dot com and they can sign up as a volunteer. Uh, another metric um, was the amount of presence I would be able to create on the internet, because as you know, uh, the internet has changed the whole political landscape mm -hmm. in terms of how well, the sure. election is going to be determined. Especially, especially uh, when yeah. you can get donations that uh, you can't be tracked back to the U.S. So. Absolutely, yeah. and so you know that has exceeded our expectations. And then also uh, the availability of uh, people like yourselves who invite me onto your program. And I've been on Fox a lot. I was on yesterday, mm -hmm. so that has exceeded our expectations. And then the fourth one, obviously, is fundraising. Campaigns don't run on air. Uh, the good news is we have been, been doing okay in that regard, but it has not exceeded our expectations. And people can also go there if they want to help, no matter how big or how small. And so our table is based upon those metrics. And i got to tell you, uh, we are now down to probably uh, weeks, not months, before I'll make a final announcement about what my intentions are. Now, some of the others, we really don't know. Obviously, we have these discussions sometimes about why do you think uh, – Palenti announced when he did. Why do you think that uh, mm -hmm. Newt almost announced? We we don't spend a whole lot of time talking about that, but we own a timetable based upon some specific metrics, and I can I can just sum it up by saying, uh, Carmen, things are looking good, but I'm not there yet. 
Well, I uh, I would agree with that <laughs> statement, but um, I and it. If you take economics out of it, if you take the money part out of it, which I know is difficult because that's probably one of the biggest things facing us. But what do you think uh, uh, the second biggest issue or or the biggest issue, in your opinion, is if you if you put the economy aside that's facing our nation? The leadership. We have a severe deficiency of leadership. Look at what's happening in Washington, D.C. right now. The president wants to blame Congress because they can't get a budget for this fiscal year, and it's already 50 percent gone. Mm-hmm. This fiscal year is already half gone based upon the, the fiscal year for the federal government. The president wants to blame Congress. Congress wants to blame the president. Then Harry Reid wants to blame the Tea Party people. Next, they're going to be blaming my dog. I mean, give me <laughs> a break. Where is the leadership? And the answer is we are void of serious leadership at all levels. Now, when it comes to the budget, that's where the president needs to be taking the leadership role. He is playing more politics because he doesn't want to upset his party colleagues in the Congress. Well, he said yesterday we all need to take a haircut, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I didn't know what that meant. You know, uh, l- let me throw something out, and I, most people probably know this about you, but maybe some don't. Sure. Uh, and one of, the, I think, the criticisms for candidates in the past, especially our current president, is that they've never ran anything. Right. Now, you're now you're the former CEO of Godfather's Pizza. In right. fact, I think, it, can I consult for you for a moment, and then you can just send me a big pile of money? Just, <laughs> why don't you send a dessert pizza to every home in America? <laughs> if pretty I much, could do that, I much would. Went over, but, um, but what do you take from that experience, and, and how important it is that somebody is a CEO or has, has built and or run something? Do you think that that's maybe what's wrong with the the gaggle of trust fund babies and uh, exactly. and Ivy League elite that we have uh, steering the ship now? Yes, Casey, you're absolutely right on. What I take from it is that what that has taught me to do, whether that was CEO of Godfathers, president of the National Restaurant Association, or when I was the vice president and regional manager for Burger King, and another big project that I did for Pillsbury, it taught me how to solve problems. This is the problem we have in Washington, D.C., we don't get a lot of problems solved. Things get worse. Solving problems starts with making sure that you're working on the right problem. Then you've got to put the right priority on it. Mm-hmm. I mean, they haven't put a priority on passing a budget. They have, there's no priority on developing a real effective energy independence strategy. Gas prices have doubled since Obama became president, mm-hmm. and that's because the rest of the world knows he's not serious about us taking advantage of the resources we have right here in the United States. The third thing you do is you surround yourself with good people. He obviously has not done that with failed economic policy, as well as some mixed messages on a number of other issues. That's what having run something, having looked bankruptcy right between the eyes when I took over Godfathers and knowing how to focus in on what are the problems, how do we prioritize, Mm -hmm. but more importantly, put together a team that knows how to put together some plans to make it happen. That's what I bring to the party. We have public unions that are being driven by communist groups like the CPUSA and and all that. Do you, are you concerned about the disruptions that are being caused by these public unions? Yes, I am uh, concerned about that disruption and what the American people have got to be told, which is the truth, that some of these unions and some of these disruptions that we are seeing, they really are trying to bring down the United States of America. They are trying to destroy the state of Wisconsin because, you know, just like, you know, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, and I remember when Eastern Airlines got into a a big union fight, Mm -hmm. and the unions didn't care if Eastern Airlines went down. Unfortunately, this is the attitude of some of these union demonstrations that are going on across this country. So it is a concern, but the American people need to know the truth. And the truth is that they will try and get their way at all costs. And the only cost that they are interested in is for the people in office to continue to raise taxes on an already overtaxed society in order to meet their demand. So, uh, Herman Cain, uh, we're chatting with him. I, I just, just a one-word answer on this, because this is what I've seen all last week. Yeah. And then we got to let you go. But all of these unions that have been protesting this week, they all say they're doing it on behalf of the anniversary of MLK and what happened to him when he was in town to, to work with sanitation union workers. How do you feel about this this hijacking of, of that event? I think it is totally inappropriate. And it is not, you know, it is not a logical argument. 
Mm -hmm. Dr. King was trying to help people yeah. who were underpaid and underrepresented. Right. All you right. cannot say that they are underpaid. That's and, part of the problem. And before you go, I just wanted to say, I want to pass this along. I had someone say to me, Herman Cain is not running because he wants to. Herman Cain is running because he feels like he has to. That's right. It goes back to the birth of my first grandchild when I looked in her face. And the first thought that went through my mind, so help me, was, what do I do to make this a better world? That was 12 years ago. And so my life is unfolding because I feel compelled to try to do something about this mess we have in Washington, D.C. All right, Herman Good Cain luck. there joining just... us. And again, you can uh, find out more, HermanCain.com. We really appreciate it. We'll have you back for sure, okay? My pleasure. Thanks. Thank All you right. so Thanks, much. Robert. Thanks, Casey. All right, thank you, uh, Herman Cain there. And uh, again, HermanCain.com.